Welcome to the e-commerce coffee break in our summer school. This week it's all about conversion rate optimization. So let's dive right into it. Hello and welcome to another episode of the e-commerce coffee break. Today we want to talk about how to optimize websites, online and e-commerce stores for conversions. Now that's a big topic. Listeners that have been on the show uh, know about me and conversion rate optimization. I'm a big fan of that and there goes a lot of different things into to make a website a store really high converting so therefore expert today on the sh on the show is Yoshin Su he's the CEO and co-founder of Replo at replo.app Replo was founded by Yoshin and his founder Noah who met 2011 while studying computer science at UC Berkeley in 2012 they launched Berkeley. BerkeleyTime.com, a digital course scheduling platform used by the University of California that continues to be used over their 1 million people by each year. Prior to starting Replo, Jujin was an engineering manager at Uber, and he led a team of 25 people there. So he has a vast experience when it comes to e-commerce and the online world. So let's welcome Jujin to the show. Hi, how are you today? Great. Thanks for having me on. You're welcome. Tell me, why is conversion rate optimization or why is optimizing a website for conversions such a, a huge topic? Yeah, I mean, it's, I, I think it's really interesting because like, I feel like every, like it, it becomes more and more kind of like um, important every year. I feel like, you know, three or four, I mean, like even in, in the tech scene, like, you know, like in, in Silicon Valley, like, you know, 10, 15 years ago, people were thinking about conversion op rate optimization, right? With like funnels and, and, and like, you know, optimizing websites and things like that but I feel like now it's like even bigger and you're like oh wait how can I how can I even get bigger and I think there's like a few kind of major changes I feel like you know generally speaking I feel like a lot within e-commerce specifically like things are getting more competitive it's like you know there's a lot more money behind a lot of brands now so um, it's really hard for you know teams to stand out um, and and when products kind of start looking the same and, and when industries become more competitive it's like you know there's only so much kind of purchasing power consumers have so it's like how do we make sure that you know, like when people do land on your site, you know, they are converting to a purchase. I think there's also kind of like technological factors, for example, like the recent like iOS privacy changes and things like that, where um, it's becoming harder to, you know, figure out attribution, figure out analytics. Um, and I think like the number of like tools that to measure conversion and the different number of channels is also increasing, right? So like your, your buyers might be coming from, you know, your, your Facebook ad or your, your TikTok ad, but it might, they might also be coming from like radio or TV and like, like, or they might be, I mean, usually people aren't coming in from like one channel, they're coming in from multiple channels. So it's like, how do you figure out attribution? How do you figure out like where to spend money and where to, you know, um, maybe that channel isn't working out. Like there's just so many different factors now. So it's like the topic is getting more complicated and then also the competition is increasing, um, which I think now people are like, okay, this is like an interesting topic to talk about because it's so complicated, right? And I think what this makes it even more complicated, we're not talking about a sim simple page. We're talking about landing pages. We're talking about product detail pages. We're talking about A-B testing, different devices, and so on and so forth. So it's really, really complex. And mm -hmm. the poor marketing manager who has to maintain, for instance, a Shopify store, um, overwhelm and um, we are creating clarity is a really, really big problem there. Now, in the past, if you wanted to change a, a site, um, it was also difficult. You need a developer, you need to have someone who knows HTML and JavaScript and all of these things. Luckily enough, this is becoming easier and easier. So that's why Replo is coming in and I want to dive a little bit later into this. But yeah. first of all, what's, what is it or what's the process of creating a user-centered website or page? What kind of steps do you need to go through? Yeah, I mean, I think... Um... Do you mean specifically like landing pages or kind of like sites in general? Like landing pages, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think like, I don't know. I feel like my hot take is kind of like, I think people, you know, th there's not, there's not like a set rule for like kind of like how these pages should be designed. I think there's, um, you know, there's all of these kind of like guides online or like gurus online. They're like, oh, like you have to design a landing page this way. And I think there's a lot of kind of like common things that work and don't, don't work. But I think, at the end of the day, like you really have to like kind of think about your team and think about the brand. And this doesn't even just apply to e-commerce, like just generally, it's like 
you're on the internet trying to sell something to someone, right? Whether that's a service or, you know, a brand or a product. And you have to like think about like, you know, who your core user is, like who is the person who would buy this product, who would be engaged by this product. And a lot of that could be driven by data, but a lot of it's also just like, you know, who are you as a company trying to sell to? Um, and I think people don't like, you know, in, intrinsically think about this. They're kind of, they kind of just, they're like, oh, I have to do landing pages or I have to do like product display pages. And it's like, okay, take a step back, think about like who your target, target audience is. What is like the story you want to tell? And that usually starts even way before people ever come onto your site, right? It's about how you do messaging on social media, how you like write your emails, like how you talk about your brand, like with your friends. Um, and that that really matters because like it also informs you. It's like, okay, if you talk to your friends and they're not resonating with what you're saying, like maybe, you know, that's that's some like maybe they're not in your core customer group, or maybe, you know, like you have to change how you're how you're talking about your product. So I think it really kind of like starts macro, like who are you trying to sell to? What is the story you're trying to sell? And then I think like each step of that funnel becomes really easy, right? It's like it informs, you know, the story you're telling, like the 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 first paragraph, which is kind of like the 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 ad that you put out or like the email that you put out with, with what type of content is there. And then kind of like weaving that story into, you know, the landing page, the purchase, they flow, the product page. And it needs to be a consistent story, right? And then by the time, because there's multiple touch points. And then at like once people are going through these multiple touch points and they might be, you know, a week apart or whatever, then like, you know, the landing page becomes easy. It's like, okay, like this is a very natural flow because you're kind of telling the middle of the story there rather than try to like reinvent something from scratch, right? So I think that's like generally kind of like how I think about, you know, design and user experience in general is like kind of telling that story. Okay. So now in the past, it was always said that a, a landing page converts generally better than a product detail page, but I think mm -hmm. that's not really the case anymore. And you can do a lot to make a product detail page high, highly converting or high converting. Mm -hmm. what, what's your take on that? Yeah, I mean, like, I think because people are used, so used to like building on Shopify and, and these these platforms, I think there's this concept of like a product detail page and there's a concept of a landing page. And, and really they're kind of just like stuff on a website, right? So it's like, if you think about, um, you know, just stuff on a website, it, like anything can be a PD, PDP and anything can be a landing page. I, I think the way we think about it is like a PDP, generally speaking, is more generic. It's like, hey, here's some generic information about this product. Um, you know, here's like the instructions, everything, you can, it can be very, very nicely designed. Like PDPs don't have to be like terrible, right? Like, um, but it's a, it's a generic page. So it's like anyone can come on and potentially buy that product. Um, the way I think about a landing page is like, it's a targeted, like kind of going back to that story metaphor. It's like, it's, it's, it's part of a story, right? It's, it's not just like, Hey, you know, why should you use this product? It's kind of like, Hey, this is why you should use this product in this context. It's like, you know, it's Mother's Day or it's Valentine's Day or it's like Christmas or it's like whatever. Like, here's why you need this product for this demographic. Like, you know, here's why, you know, someone in this age group um, living in this area needs this product for, you know, this date. And if you tell the story that way, I mean, you can tell your PDP that, that story that way too, but, you know, like having multiple different landing pages, like even like, you know, hundreds of different landing pages, it's like you can tell a very targeted person the story to each person. Um, and that just like, I mean, it's kind of like if I try to sell you something or if I like I'm your friend and I try to sell you something, right? And it's like a totally different narrative because there's a certain level of trust there. Um, and that that's why landing pages convert better because they're just so so much more targeted to to you know telling that story. Okay. Now, Shopify has come a long way when it comes to how you can edit your page um, with Shopify Online Shopping 2.0, which came out some point at last year in the in last year. Mm -hmm. um, there is a lot of things you can do by now, but really creating landing pages is still a bit of a struggle with the onboard tools. Now, Replo has a solution for that. Tell me a little bit, what's your approach there and what have you developed to make life easier? Yeah, I think the fundamental insight that we had, I think, you know, like when we started this company um, was that like, you know, kind of like what I mentioned at the top of this podcast, which is like, I think, you know, the space is getting increasingly competitive um, in, in the e-commerce space. Um, companies are more focused on on design. Um, they're more focused on brand. They're more focused on trust. Um, you can't just get away with, you know, a simple drop shipping, you know, landing page anymore and expect to have very high conversion, you know, like four or five years ago. So um, I think the space is getting increasingly competitive. Um, at the same time, like people are 
they need to do more testing, right? Like they, there's many more different audiences. People are selling in different channels now. They're, they're selling in way more, you know, advertising way more markets. Um, so that's, that's really challenging because you not only have to, you know, have a really nicely designed landing page, you also have to have a, a them because you want to do a bunch of testing. Um, and then the third thing I think also is that like people are getting more used to using tools to do design, to do like, you know, photography they're working with more agencies and partners um so we we see a lot of brands now using figma and like sketch to do a lot of designs and they have in-house designers and generally like they'll hire someone for branding and, and visual design and graphic design like way before they ever hire a developer right so like obviously brands are resonating with this concept of like hey like we need to make sure you know our brand is trustworthy and, and we're telling the story of like you know what we're about um and i think in that context this is why we created replo which is that like you know if you use a Shopify theme or if you use kind of like the more kind of like basic page builders in the app store, that works great if you kind of want a more basic page and you want some content. But a lot of brands are thinking more about like, how do I create these, you know, really visually nice pages that that tell the story of what we're what we're trying to sell, what our company is about. And the thing about Rappel is that it's totally customizable. The layout system is exactly like um, the Figma auto layout system. Um, we actually just announced today that we raised, you know, $4 million seed round. Um, partially from Figma. So a lot of the user experience, a lot of the design aesthetics, a lot of the 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 the, the kind of workflows are very similar to kind of how designers work on these teams, um, which enables these companies to iterate really, really quickly on these landing pages, you know, get, you know, 10 or 20 launched every single week um, without ever really having to hire a full-time developer. So okay. Well, that, um, obviously that's that's um, increases productivity, that saves a ton of time. Your integration into Shopify is native. So what's the actually the process to get started and to build your first landing page within Shopify, but using Replu? Yeah, it's we try to make it really easy. So um, we're live on the Shopify app store. So if you search Replo, R-E-P-L-O um, on the Shopify app store, um, you can find our integration there, um, or you can go to our website, replo.app. Um, and you can just create an account. Um, you can manage multiple Shopify stores within one account. So agencies and partners find that really helpful. But um, once you integrate your store, um, we give you a bunch of templates to use out of the box. So we have like 30 or 40 templates. We have like hundreds of different sections that we know already convert well. So like um, a lot of times people just pick one of these sections, but you can also design something from scratch. Um, and yeah, all you have to do is, you know, go in, you know, update the images and, and text you want and then click publish. We handle all of the publishing to Shopify. So we we handle the integration with Shopify. We make sure the page is loading quickly. We do a lot of like lazy loading of assets and things like that so that, you know, the page loads really quickly. And, and I think that's something that, you know, we think a lot about is like, how do we make sure, you know, a lot of times Shopify stores load really slowly. Like how do we make sure things are still loading as quickly as possible? Um, and then of course the native integration with Shopify is like, super key here for like analytics and, and all the different apps people are using. So um, it's super easy to get started. We have companies that are like one person using us. We have companies that are doing $100 million this year using us. So it's um, like a wide spectrum of, of users. Okay. Yeah. Now, native integration means also you can use all the features of Shopify. What happens if you have, I don't know, features that you have in an app and that you want to integrate into a landing page? How does that work? Yeah, totally. I mean, we try to build out as many integrations as possible because I think like the uh, the the way the Shopify app ecosystem is is done, I think sometimes integrating apps isn't the isn't the easiest thing in the world. And and like I think we both of us have experience with this, so we try to make it as easy as possible. I mean, but because it's on Shopify and we're we're we're, we're converting everything back into Liquid as if kind of a developer wrote that page, you're able to insert you know Liquid. You're able to insert other apps as well, and and we commonly see people embedding um, apps within within the landing page um, that they want to do. So for example, rebuy or like um, you know, different reviews and different subscription services. Um, we're, we're, we're moving pretty quickly to kind of like make that, you know, like kind of integration even easier. But um generally like anything you can do on Shopify, you can do in Replo. Um, so it's 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 it becomes quite easy for for people to integrate. And and I think that's like one of the nice things about you know, building on Shopify and building natively within Shopify is that it's a lot harder to do actually than just, you know, deploying a website somewhere and just like, you know, living living on your own island. But the user experience, the end product is just like a lot nicer if you if you have that integration. Okay. I just want to take one step back and going to yeah. um, the, the integration, the flow and the reasoning why you should have a landing page over a product detail page. Give me some examples 
how your clients or in which context your clients are using landing pages within their Shopify store? Yeah, I think like the, um, so there's like, I think three major use cases for, I mean, there's probably more, but there's there's kind of three major use cases for Repo today. And and we kind of like to think of ourselves as not just uh, an app for landing pages. I think it's like, how, like kind of going back to the, 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 the telling of a story, right? It's like, as a brand, you need to tell so many different stories. And, and some of them just happen to be landing pages because you're driving traffic to it. So um, one really big example of like something that traditionally isn't a landing page is like, we work with this company called Studs. They're a um, they're a earring like kind of piercing company in 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 the states, and and they have physical retail everywhere. And and a big part about getting your ears pierced is like you know you have to it, it's something that's affecting your body. Like you need to, you want to have some user education around it. You want to tell explain to people what they are. So a lot of times they'll have landing pages actually driving to user education, and it's not even you know directly buying a product online. It's like hey like come into our stores like experience the difference of like our brand versus someone else's brand or going to like a tattoo parlor or something, right? So um, that's an example where it's like, you're not even directly selling something, but you're kind of telling the story of like trust and and, and brand and, 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 and you know, eventually that will lead to a conversion and, and a sale for your company, um, but, but it's kind of like indirect, right? Um, but we also have, you know, more traditional landing pages and kind of retargeting pages. So for example, um, people will, will use it for, you know, if someone purchased a product previously and then they'll retarget them on, on social media or Facebook or whatever um, and, and be like, hey, like here, here, like up, up, upsell into a subscription or, you know, you bought this great product like like three times, like maybe you should consider getting a subscription and we have an integration with all the different subscription apps. So that's kind of like an interesting thing where it's like there's no PDP that's like only selling subscriptions, right? Um, like that's kind of like a weird thing because most people, like 95% of people won't have ever bought your product. So you're kind of convincing them to buy the product, but you can actually have the separate page in Rappler, which is kind of like, hey, you've bought our product like three times. Like, you know, just click this button, upgrade to a subscription. Um, it will save you money. And it's kind of this like narrow kind of interesting use case, but it, it converts really well because like, you know, everyone who comes on the page to have bought the product like a bunch of times already, right? Um, so I think it's kind of like these very narrow kind of like edge cases kind of where like you can tell this really compelling story because the more, the less people you focus on, the, the more convincing you kind of are, right, as, as a company. And um, I think that really drives conversion. And, and that that brings in a lot, I mean, over a large number of customers, a large number of subscribers, that brings in a, a ton of revenue for, for for the businesses that do that. So, um, Yeah, I think there were amazing examples um, to show our listeners and the viewers on YouTube what you actually can do with a tool like that and creating more content in different styles. Um, and you said it comes with a lot of templates um, yeah. within Shopify. What is the timeline or what's the learning curve for someone who wants to get started? Yeah, so I think there's different ways people work with Raplo. So um, like if you have kind of like a, you know, some a little bit of a design background or if you have, you know, an eye for design, like you can totally go in and just like, you know, we have people with no t like coding experience. They've never written a single line of code in their life. And they go into Repl and they're like, I love this. They're like, <laughs> and then they'll, they'll, you know, they'll use it for like 10 or 11 hours, like, you know, a day. And it's like super crazy to see, like we, we track, you know, like generally like how, what the average time people spend in the editor is. And like a lot of people will spend like hours and hours, like just playing with stuff. And they're like, they're like, I spent the whole weekend on this. And I'm like, Jesus, like you spent more time using this than I have. Like, so like, it's, definitely like i think there's definitely you know like it's really easy to get started like you can use our templates you can change a lot of copy you can also do a lot of experimentation because in shopify it's really hard to like you know suddenly go from one layout to another layout like and you can do that in repo really easily like literally like with one button you can like rearrange everything and and all all of that so um there's definitely like you know the vast majority of people i would say are are using repo just by themselves and, and they're able to get by without you know ever you know interacting with a developer or anyone from our team um, I think, you know, a lot of people are busy. Um, a lot of agencies, they're training out like 30 or 40 landing pages a week on Repo, which is like really insane. It's, you know, not possible for anyone to do like by themselves. So we also have a team of Repo experts. And, and this is kind of like the community that we, we're, we're trying to create as well is like, you know, we, a few months ago, like we probably had like 20 people in the Slack channel that we were using for customer support. And now it's like over 700 people in that, in that, in that Slack channel. Um, and, and that community is going super quickly. And it's like, freelancers, it's agencies, it's, you know, uh, people who can take a Figma design or, or, or Adobe design and, and convert it um, and build it in Repo. 
And it's like, we've, we've also interviewed a lot of these people. So we have this thing called Repo Experts. Um, you give us a design, we'll build it in Repo in, in three days, uh, three business days, we'll turn it around. And we can also parallelize that. So we can build, you know, 20 landing pages a week at the same exact time for you. Um, and that's just a separate service we offer. Um, we also have, you know, a lot of people are like, hey, I really love this, but I don't know where to start because I don't have a background in, in conversion rate optimization, or I don't have a background in design. That's fine. We'll introduce you to one of our freelancers. Um, they actually work with a lot of big brands that are doing like 50, 60 million dollars a year. Um, and you know, even for a few hundred dollars, um, depending on what your budget is, they'll actually design the landing page, they'll write the copy for you, they'll like work with one of our experts to build it in Repo. Um, five day turnaround time, they'll have a landing page for you. So, like for us, it's just like, you know, we we built the software and then we were like, oh wait, there's like actually a bunch of services that we can add to this. Like we don't make any money off of it, but it also just, you know, engage it makes people engaged. Like it, like we have ta people talking about, you know, conversion rate optimization and design in our Slack channel. And we're like, this has nothing to do with our software, but that's perfectly fine because I think people are having these conversations and it's really fun to see. Um, but you know, like my kind of mentality is like, we're still a small company. We want to help people wherever we can. So if, you know, we have literally a calendar link where you can book a demo with someone on our team still on our website. And people are like, that's crazy. And we get like, you know, 30 or 40 demos a week. But, you know, like for us, it's worth it because we talk to each merchant and we're like, okay, like we understand everyone's busy. Like what is, you know, how, how can we help you? And, and we have services at every level with our freelancers and partners to help you um, if you need, if you need help. Or you can just go in and, and do everything yourself as well. Mm -hmm. I was on your website earlier today, and because it's difficult to show a graphic tool in a podcast, and uh, you have a video there where you basically show people how it works, and I think it's mm -hmm. very, very straightforward. And I think it's like a three or four minute video, so it's easy to digest. Um, you were <laughs> yeah. talking about the budget. Um, give me an idea about the pricing. Yeah, totally. So if you have a um if you have like a Figma file ready to go, so a lot of teams will be like, hey, like I have, you know, design resources on my team. I, I have this design that I really like. Um, I just need, you know, someone to convert it and, and build it in Repo just because I don't have time this week. Um, the budget for that's around 200 to $250 US. Um, it, and it will generally go even cheaper if you're building on multiple pages. So if it's a one-off project, it'll be around 200. Um, a lot of times it'll be like 150 to 200, something like that. Um, and our guarantee is that we have turned around in three business days. So Figma to Raplo, three business days. Um, we'll also do the QA, multiple rounds of revisions. And if you like working with that person, um, you can just keep working with them. We don't make any money off of it. Um, we just, you know, like want to make sure people are working with great freelancers because I think we've all had the experience of like hiring someone online and they turn out to be really bad. So um, I just want to like <laughs> avoid that experience for everyone, right? Um, so the next step up is kind of like, you know, you want to do landing pages and you want a new design. You want someone to write the copy because I think copy is really important and kind of like how you lay out content is really important. And a lot of times people are like, hey, I don't have a designer on my team or, or they're just graphic designers. There's not, they're not UX designers. Like, um, so our, the pricing for that starts at about five or $600 um, total. Um, so basically we'll, we'll take in, um, so our freelancer will take in, again, again, we don't make any money off of this. It's just like, um, the freelancer will get all of your brand assets. So whether that's a like Google drive or like some photography, they'll look at your current website. Um, they'll generally schedule like a 30 minute kind of like consulting call with you just to like walk through like how um, everything, you know, they're, how they're thinking about everything. Um, five business days, um, they'll get the design, they'll get the copy and they'll get the page done in Replo. Um, and that's like, freaking amazing <laughs> like it's like um i think the turnaround speed and time there is just like really amazing i mean we're trying to keep that bar really high and like um and we have a lot of kind of tools to help our experts as well and they have a direct line of access to us for support and things like that so around the clock we'll we'll be helping them but that's just like you know five six hundred dollars i mean the the most people are driving a few thousand dollars minimum to, to to some of these pages i mean some people are driving like millions of dollars to these pages even like a 0.1% conversion rate change is like, it's like instant money back, you know, like, um, so I think it's definitely worth it. And and we have some part agencies like, you know, building landing pages for, you know, thousands of dollars. And and on the outside, it's like, holy shit, like a thousand dollars, like $2,000, that's really expensive. But if you think about the returns on some of these, some of these pages, it's like the, the quality of these pages is just like so much higher than, you know, like what some of our, our, our clients are coming in with. And it's just like, it's, it's like night and day. It's like, 1% conversion to like four or five, 6% conversion. And it's like even higher than that. Um, so 
like I think that that makes a huge difference. So, but that that's roughly the price point that we're usually trying. Okay, to no, I totally agree that um, um, that's money well invested. Um, as I said, the conversion rate if it doubles, you double your business or the sales for that specific product. Where can yeah. people find out more about Replo? Yeah, so if you just go to replo.app, r e p l o dot app, um, and you can you know find you can fill out a form, find one of our experts. We'll get in touch within 24 hours. Um, or you can just download the app and start playing around with it uh, yourself. So uh, we try to make it really easy. And if you're, you know, confused or have any questions, like you can always just book a demo with someone on our team and, and we're happy to hop on a call and explain everything to you as well. So excellent. I will put the link yeah. in the show notes and you're just one click away. Yushin, that was cool. um, very insightful when it comes to um, building things much, much faster and much being more productive within Shopify. So thanks yeah. for that. And um, thanks for being on the on the coffee break. Have a great day. Yeah, no, thank you and have, thanks for having me on.